Imagine reaching Alpha Centauri in just 60 years, a journey that would normally take thousands. This could become a reality with the Nuclear Saltwater Rocket, NSWR, a radical propulsion concept by Robert Zubrin. Capable of reaching 7.6% of light speed, this rocket could make interstellar travel possible within a human lifetime. Unlike chemical rockets, which burn out quickly, or ion drives, which sacrifice speed for efficiency, this rocket delivers both power and endurance. But how does it work? What challenges must be overcome? And how could it change the future of space travel? Let's dive into the science behind this game-changing technology. In this video, we'll explore the science behind this game-changing technology, its feasibility, and its revolutionary potential for interstellar exploration. The nuclear saltwater rocket is unlike any propulsion system ever designed. Instead of relying on chemical combustion or solar-powered electric thrusters, it harnesses the raw power of nuclear fission in an entirely new way. At its core, this rocket uses a solution of uranium or plutonium salts dissolved in water as both fuel and propellant. This high-energy mixture is stored in boron carbide-coated pipes, which prevent premature nuclear reactions. The real magic happens when this uranium salt solution is pumped into a reaction chamber. As it accumulates, the concentration of uranium reaches critical mass, triggering an ongoing nuclear fission reaction. The energy released from this reaction superheats the water, turning it into a high-energy plasma that is expelled through a nozzle to generate tremendous thrust. Unlike nuclear thermal rockets, where reactors remain intact, this rocket expels its nuclear material as part of the reaction process, delivering an unparalleled combination of power and efficiency. What makes this technology extraordinary is its specific impulse, a measure of propulsion efficiency. Traditional chemical rockets, like the Saturn V, have a specific impulse of about 450 seconds, while nuclear thermal rockets can achieve around 900 seconds. However, this rocket boasts a specific impulse exceeding 10,000 seconds, meaning it can sustain high thrust acceleration for extended periods, something no other propulsion system can offer. If weapons-grade uranium, 90% enriched U233, is used, the exhaust velocity can reach 4,725 kilometers per second, or 1.575% of the speed of light. By using a 30,000-ton ice asteroid as additional propellant, along with 7,500 tons of uranium, the NS Studiboar could propel a 300-ton spacecraft to an astonishing 7.6% of light speed. This means that a journey to Alpha Centauri could be completed in just 60 years, instead of the tens of thousands of years required by current propulsion systems. For the first time in human history, we are looking at a propulsion method that could make interstellar travel possible within a single lifetime. A crew launching in their 20s could arrive at another star system while still alive, and their children could grow up as the first generation in an entirely new world. Despite its enormous potential, this rocket faces several major challenges that must be solved before it can become a reality. One of the most pressing concerns is heat and material degradation. The nuclear fission reactions inside the chamber generate temperatures in the millions of degrees, making it extremely difficult to find materials that can withstand such extreme conditions. While water cooling systems have been proposed to protect the nozzle and reactor chamber, ensuring the long-term stability of these components is still a major hurdle. Another critical challenge is radioactive exhaust. Unlike conventional nuclear rockets, where radioactive materials remain inside a reactor, this rocket ejects highly radioactive plasma directly into space. This makes using it anywhere near Earth or in orbit completely impractical, as the expelled material could pose a severe threat to surrounding spacecraft, satellites, or planetary environments. This rocket could only be deployed far from human presence, likely in deep space. There's also the issue of ensuring reactor stability. 
the system must be precisely controlled so that the uranium solution does not go critical until it enters the reaction chamber. If the flow rate or injection system fails, the entire system could become unstable, leading to catastrophic consequences. Developing reliable safety mechanisms is absolutely essential before this technology can be seriously considered for space missions. To address these challenges, a development roadmap has been proposed, outlining a step-by-step -step approach. The first phase involves bench-scale experiments using non-radioactive substitutes to test storage and injection systems. This would be followed by subcritical nuclear tests, where real uranium salts are used, but without triggering a full reaction. Once safety and material behavior are well understood, the project would move to controlled criticality tests with small-scale fission reactions. The final steps involve building an integrated system prototype, conducting space-based test flights, and eventually scaling up to full operational deployment. With this roadmap, this rocket could become a reality within the next 15 to 24 years, assuming funding and research progress smoothly. However, if we leverage advanced simulations, regulatory collaborations, and international partnerships, this timeline could be shortened by at least five years, bringing interstellar travel within reach sooner than we ever imagined. One of the most exciting applications of this rocket is its potential for interstellar travel, which has long been considered impossible with conventional propulsion systems. Chemical rockets, like those used for the Apollo missions, would take tens of thousands of years to reach Alpha Centauri, while even nuclear thermal propulsion would still require thousands. With a nuclear saltwater rocket-powered spacecraft, that journey could be cut down to just 60 years, well within a single human lifetime. This means that for the first time in history, a crew of astronauts could depart Earth and personally witness another star system, rather than relying on multi-generational missions or purely robotic probes. This level of performance doesn't just change where we can go, it changes how we plan missions. Instead of slow-moving probes that take decades or centuries to reach their destinations, the NSWR could allow for real-time exploration of deep space, with the ability to transport scientists, engineers, and even colonists beyond our solar system, the concept of settling habitable exoplanets is no longer just science fiction. A future mission to an Earth-like exoplanet in the TRAPPIST-1 system, or Proxima Centauri b, suddenly becomes an engineering challenge rather than an outright impossibility. Beyond interstellar travel, this rocket could also revolutionize exploration within our own solar system. Missions to the outer planets and their moons could be completed in a matter of weeks rather than years. Colonizing Mars, for example, could become vastly more practical, as transport times would be drastically reduced. Instead of taking six to nine months with current chemical rockets, a nuclear saltwater rocket-powered spacecraft-powered ship could make the journey in just a few weeks, enabling rapid transit between Earth and Mars for supplies, personnel, and colonization efforts. Similarly, missions to Europa, Titan, and Enceladus, which hold the best chances of discovering extraterrestrial life within our solar system, could become much more feasible. These icy moons contain vast subsurface oceans, and being able to transport advanced robotic probes, drilling equipment, and even human researchers in a reasonable time frame would be a major breakthrough in astrobiology. For example, a spacecraft could use this rocket for rapid initial acceleration, reaching high speeds quickly. Then, a secondary fusion-based or nuclear electric propulsion system could take over, providing long-duration thrust while conserving fuel. Magnetic sails, mag sails, could then be deployed for deceleration, allowing the spacecraft to gradually slow down without consuming additional fuel. Thank you for watching. If you found this exciting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the future of space travel.